We start tonight with the efforts to crack down on crime in and around the Queen City. That's right, Fred. Child sex trafficking. You know, people might say it's not happening in my city, not in my neighborhood, not in my home. Well, wrong. The numbers say otherwise. A recent study in Mecklenburg County found child sex exploitation cases were tied to at least half of the county's zip codes. And those fighting the problem say in some cases, the parents had no idea their child was part of this world. Former faces of sex trafficking blossoming into a new chapter. We really try to create an environment that they know that they have people that believe in them. Hannah Arrowwood with Present Age Ministry says these photos of program graduates adorning the walls of the Concord based nonprofit serve as proof there is life after darkness. But she says the sad truth is the darkness knows no boundaries. People would be not only alarmed, but shocked because it's happening everywhere. The group, alongside other members of the Charlotte Metro Human Trafficking Task Force, discovered that in a recent study of trafficking activity in Mecklenburg County, they found 170 suspected and confirmed cases of child sex trafficking in 2020, 2021, and 2022. Half of Mecklenburg's zip codes had at least one case, with hot spots in North Charlotte, just east and west of 77, west by the airport, and east near Hidden Valley and near North Sharon Amity. There were also cases tied to zip codes covering Ballantyne, Cotswold, South Park, and South End. It crosses every class, race, geography, socioeconomics. Arrowwood says the image of a trafficked child also isn't what many assume. Kidnapped, locked away, separated from or even victimized by their parents. The norm is it's somebody from the outside. A lot of times traffickers will groom and target online. Every social media platform we've seen victimization and recruitment come from. And in some cases, she says the parents had no idea. They are sneaking out at night and performing plays or dates. Those are the terms that the girls will use. Or we've also seen where they run away for three or four days and then they come back home. But disappearing for long stretches is just one sign. Arrowwood suggests parents also look out for new branding or tattoos, possessions like bags or shoes that would otherwise be out of their means, strange sleeping patterns, and extreme mood or behavioral changes. A child can be victimized for up to two years before they're ever identified. While discovering trafficking can be earth shattering for a family, Airwood says it's not a life sentence. With the right resources and 360 support, there is a chance to emerge and turn over a new leaf. I think oftentimes we think that it, it's hopeless and it's just not. You know, I could sit and tell you story after story of girls whose lives are forever changed. And the reality of it is, is that they just need people who are willing to walk through them through the mess. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they'll do the work. And you can watch my extended interview with Arrowwood on our WCNC Charlotte YouTube page. There she'll discuss the three life factors that tend to lead kids to falling victim to a trafficker. Also what makes getting legal justice in these cases uniquely difficult. And also who's on the front lines of finding these secret cases. And so who really needs to know these signs?